Hello guys, I'm back. Yes. What I'm going to do is the transfer of the um, the seahorse. Of course, we want them looking that way because that's the way we like it. So I printed it in, I don't know, a mirror. You mirror it in Photoshop so that you can put it the right way around. And I am looking for a brush which I'm gonna use I think I'll use this one so what I'm doing this with is a with a paste this is heavy gel gloss and I'm just gonna put this on here gonna make sure that we have the seahorse nicely covered with this stuff you can see a little bumpy stuff but as you put it on, you can see that it smooths out pretty, pretty much. But the good thing about this is that it leaves a nice thick layer of gel gloss. And this is the stuff that you usually put through. Um, you can mix it in your acrylic paint so that it uh, sort of um, gives it a, a, a really thick body. So when you put it on your canvas, you get that really high re relief. I don't know how you call it in uh, in English, but you know that it gives you those really nice brush strokes. Now I forgot to wet the paper on the back. Well, that'll have to do. We'll see. So we're gonna put some on here. Now I want to put them a little bit down so that we can see those white cells up here, as you can see up here because that's going to sort of resemble the surface of the water. I think that's enough. There you go. I'm going to put them on like this. Make sure we have both sides that we give them enough room. That's about where we want them. A little bit up here. Now I'm going to make sure that there are no air bubbles. Like that. And I'm going to do a little roll roller just to make sure that it's nice and flat. And then I'm going to put a little water on top just to make sure that it doesn't you know, buckle while it's drying. Don't want to rub too much because then we're going to rub the paper off. But as you can see here, let's see, yeah, there's, I think there's enough under there. Might give it a little bit more here, down here. There you go. So that's about all we need and we're going to let that dry and then we're going to take the paper off. Now what I've done in the, um, uh, in the past a couple of times that I have rolled it and some of that uh, gel came underneath, squished out and got on the paper and then you can't get the paper off. So you know it makes it waterproof so you don't want that. So what you really want is that nothing comes squishing out. I see that it is here, it is a little wet. So I'm not gonna rub it back like that because then I'll rub the gel on top of the paper and you can't get it off. So we don't want that. But I do want this to be nice and flat. I see there's a little spot there that I have an idea that it doesn't have enough paste. Okay, now it does. Now, you cannot do this with an inkjet printer. As we know, you need a laser, laser printer. So um, that's what you need for the people asking. And the paper is just normal printer paper. You don't need any special paper. Any paper will do, but what I do is I get the image. This one I took off um, Pixabay because Pixabay is copyright free. You can use them to even sell your art. 
anything you download from Pixabay is absolutely copyright free. So that's the best way to go because you don't want to take something off the internet and have copyright issues because that's not the good way to, to do that. Especially when you're going to sell something. So this is copyright free. Now I'm pretty happy with uh, how it's laying on there. I can see how it's uh, going to be when I peel off the paper. So that's looking okay. So we're going to let that dry and then I'll come back and I'll rub it off. Um, we're having some exceptional weather. Uh, last time I told you guys it was like minus 20 and now we're having plus 20 so that's that's unreal that really is it's uh that's a big difference and I don't have anything here with Fahrenheit on it or I would tell you what that was no I don't so um but it's a lot and it's really just like spring or early summer it's uh, the sun is shining and I still have a little bit of ice on my uh, on my pond, but that'll be gone by tomorrow. So then we're back to uh, normal weather. Uh, on the downside of all that snow, uh, a lot of snow accumulated on the roof. And when it started melting, and it melted fast, I had some really big water damage upstairs. So um, I had a mattress that was soaked and um, all the sheets and stuff and I had to wash that and good thing I, ha I have a mattress where you can take the, the, the top and the bottom you can take that off um, there's a, a zipper all the way around you can take that off so I could wash that so I'm really happy with that or otherwise I'd have to throw it away and you know claim it with the insurance but I don't want to do that there's going to be a lot of claiming of insurance so I want to avoid that Okay, guys, I'll be back when this is dry. See you in a bit. Love you all to pieces. Okay, I think it's dry now, so I'm going to put a little bit of water on top of it. And let that soak in a little bit. There you can see the uh, seahorse. So we can take this off here, I think, yeah, that works. That's most of it. Okay, and then we're just going to rub it, because if you do it with the nails, I have seen that, you know, you scrape some of that black off the transfer part and we don't want that. So here we go. I might want to speed this up a little bit that it's not too boring. Here we can do it with the nails because there's no transfer. Now, what you want to look out for is uh, when you do this and you think you're ready because sometimes when it's like this, like down here, you think it's already ready, but it's not. There's still a lot of fibers on it and you really want to make sure that all those fibers are gone because when you paint over it uh, the paint will catch those fibers and they will stand up a little bit and it's better if you have them all off you know it's just it looks just a little bit neater now if the if you would want to paint this this is also a nice way to, um, if you're not that good at drawing something, you could do a transfer and then just paint it. That would also look really cool. I might do that one next weekend or something. 
it depends on when I'm gonna get my uh, I, I do I put in a big order of um, wait a minute let me do this first I put a big big order in for um, those wooden panels I'm sure you all know the ones I'm talking about I'll show you one in a bit first I want to do well, the way to get the fibers off, see yours a lot more, is with one of those spongy things. So now see, there's a lot of fibers on the on the sponge, but to show you that there's still a lot more on there, let me get it all off. So that's pretty pretty neat. And when we go over it again, you can see there's still fibers on there. And that's what I was talking about, making sure that you get all the fibers off. And as you can see, you don't have to be too careful because the, uh, the transfer still stays on there. So you just get some off. See, there's uh, now it's pretty much clean. And again, there's fibers. So you want to do that a couple of times. Best way to do that is have a uh, bucket of water that you can really clean off your little spongy, spongy thing. I'm just sort of whacking it on the table. So now it's sort of clean again. You don't want to put too much pressure on it. Just in really fast circular motions. And here you see that there's again a lot of fibers. So you keep doing that until it's all off. And it's nice and smooth. Oops, I almost whacked it off the table there. So there you go. And I can still see fibers here. Okay, now the part, we let it dry again. And there's still fibers here, I can see them. So we're going to let that dry and then uh, I'm going to look over it like that. Oh, I can see the fibers right here. When you put it in the light, you can see it. When you put it like that and you look over it here, I can see where there is still some paper up here and here. So I'm going to take that off. I might not have to speed up the video. Okay, be right back. Okay guys, I'm uh, ready to do some painting and um, what I'm using is a combination of micas, mica, mica. We have the primary elements and if you're going to look for this one, what you want to look for is, I'll put it under the video, the website where you can buy these. So it's uh, www.colorarts.com. And um, they have amazing colors. They're beautiful. You can use them in resin work and you can use them for this. And we're going to use Pearl X. Everyone knows Pearl X. There it is, Pearl X. So um, you can buy these all over the world. And right now I have Pearl X on my little brush. The good thing about this is all you need is some polymer medium and this is this is not that expensive it's from Vallejo and it's called polymer medium uh, I have them in my shop the big ones and the little ones the little ones are something like four euros so and you could paint like 26,000 canvases with it because you don't need much all I do is drop a few drops on here then I take my brush First wet it a little bit, 
I dab it in some of that mica stuff and then just make sure it's nice and covered like that. That's all you need. So then when you go over this, it, it is really very transparent and that's what I like about it. So you're thinking um, she's not doing anything, I can't see anything because the, the light is directly above it. But I will show you in a bit what it looks like in the light. So I want this part of the uh, seahorse, the front, to have this beautiful blue iridescent color. So we're gonna, and the good thing is you don't have to be so precise. You can just go over all the lines, doesn't matter whatsoever because of the transparency and that makes it really nice stuff to work with. Now look at this, see that? When I let the light shine on it, bounce on it, you can see that I've done here, I've went down, came right down here, did the little curl, and that's what happens when the light catches it. So the transfer stays in, in place. Now I'm going to get some purple, some of the purple color, so I'll just wash out the little brush, and I'll show you how I do that. So I get another drop of that polymer medium, I put the brush in, and there you have it. A little bit more because we want to keep that transparency. Now this one is a little bit more opaque as you can see, so we have to be careful with it. So what I'm going to do is bring on a little bit of that purple and then put it in between here too. And then take a brush with more of the uh, solution and just brush it out. Now like I said you still see the uh, transfer but now it has the uh, the nice mica on top. So let me brush it out a little bit. So just want to make it a little lighter. So we're going to give that face a little bit of color. And you can still see the transfer coming right through. I think that's about it. And then start giving it a little bit of the purpley. Because like I said, I was going to make it into that rainbowy color. You know how it, when you get a fish out of water and the light bounces off the the, uh, the side of the fish that it gives you that rainbow effect. So we're going to close that one up. And we're going to go to my favorite color, kiwi, kiwi color. Because it it is really a beautiful um, light green. I don't have really a lot left. There you go. We're going to put that next to it. Next to the purple color. And there you, you see where the, the light bounces on it. How beautiful it is. And I am, I am positive that anyone can do this. You don't have to be able to draw that well. You don't have to be able to do anything. Just pick out nice colors. What you think is going to go with it. And that's all you have to do. Then we're going to come down here. There you go. See that? That's really pretty. I do think I want a stripe of green going straight through the middle. So I'm sort of blending it a little bit. Now looking for another color. We need a pinkish color. 
sort of a coral, coral color. I do have it somewhere. I'm sure I have it. Looking for coral. Oh, there you are. Coral berry. We're going to use that one. Ooh. There's a lot in there. So we're going to tap it on there. And we're going to give it a little bit of that coral color. <laughs> That's a tongue twister. Coral color. Okay, guys, I was talking to you uh, yesterday about what I'm... Um, what I decided to do. Um, I have ordered a, a lot of those panels. I will show you. These panels. Cradled wood panels. And I think you can remember that I made this one a while back. So I'm going to make a whole series of these. I uh, ordered, uh, I think, a, a 12 or something like that. 12 small ones and, and two bigger ones and I'm going to do a, a whole series and um, there's a, a gallery here that asked you know if I were willing to uh, put some work up in the gallery so that's what I'm going to be working on and uh, that's something I'm looking forward to. And what else is new? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what else is new. Nothing much, I guess. And of course, you don't want to overdo it too much. You know, getting, uh, getting this, these colors on it it's going to be nice because when the light shines on it, you're going to see a lot of iridescent colors. See that? That is really seahorse-like. I think, well, not really, because seahorses, most of them are brown. They're not that colorful. <laughs> but uh, I like this because it, it reminds me of a fish. So I want one more color. I want something yellowish. This is lemon drop. We'll see what lemon drop does. Ooh, that's really nice and lemony. So we're going to put that in between. And on the back. That looks pretty. Come down here. Maybe a little down there. <clears throat> and then up here a little bit of that yellow to give it a little bit of contrast that looks really nice and this bit so to sum it all up guys this is um, we did a swipe we did a background swipe then we let it dry I cleaned this, the surface because I had some silicone for the uh, cells. So we cleaned the surface. Then we printed out the transfer. I got it from www.pixabay.com because it's copyright free. I can't stress that enough because you don't want to get in trouble for, um, you know, using something and then, you know, later on they're going to find you or something like that you don't want that so um that's what we that's what we took the uh, transfer from then i used this the heavy 
gel gloss it's Vallejo also um, I'm choosing for the Vallejo because well people that have watched all my videos know that I, I like the quality uh, the quality and expense it has to have a balance so the quality is high and it doesn't cost as much as like Windsor and Newton and Liquitex and all those so I like that that you know everyone can buy it because everyone can afford it so that's what we put on the uh, transfer then we took it off with uh, just water in your finger and like I said you have to be careful that you take all the fibers off I'm just making that a little darker because I like uh, I like the shadowy idea along the the side so um, you take it off and then at the in the end you use a sponge to get all the fibers off and then you just paint this now like I said yesterday you can do two things you can just paint over it with normal acrylic paint you could use this as a sort of a, a template and just make you know just really paint it you could or you can do like this and I know that a lot of people that do um, resin pouring they have all these micas already so all they need is really something to uh, mix in with it and that would be the polymer medium I'm pretty sure Dick Blick sells it in America because Dick Blick has Vallejo stuff so um, that's where you can find it and I know that the price is almost the same as what I pay for it here in Europe so that's a good deal let's see oh yeah that is pretty that is really shiny I'll, tr I'll just see if I can make a, a little picture of this outside in the Sun I'm pretty sure that's going to be really beautiful but you don't really want it too shiny because you could also if you wanted to and maybe at me nee, let's not do that you're <laughs> you know what I was gonna say I was gonna say let's put some glitter on it <laughs> but let's not do that nah let's just put a little bit of darker bit down here so that it gives it a little bit of feeling of shadow I think I'll just call it a day people that's it now what you can do is when this is dry you put a layer of um, uh, varnish on top and I would I think I'd choose to do the matte not the really shiny because I'm sure that if you put matte over this it'll still show the iridescence of these uh, micas I'm pretty sure of that so um, there you go nice and shiny I'll show you uh, outside in the Sun okay guys thanks for watching uh, this is gonna be the only video I do this uh, today because I'm gonna be uh, playing around with uh, acrylics I'm going to be making a lot of, um, I'll show you when I'm ready. I'll show you. So see you in the next video. Thanks all for watching. Love you all to pieces. Bye-bye.